the place that holds so much of your family's history. And so when they get to the site, um, the parents never rebuilt the house. So it's just land. They still own it because they, but they couldn't afford to rebuild it. Um, so Jackson then asks to see where Aspen is buried. I'm like, damn, he just asking for everything. And he ain't even told everything. The only thing he said was it was a damn fire. But he's like trying to get everything out of her. I was like, I was like, geez. So um, Aspen is actually bur buried at his gravesite is at the house. Oof. And apparently um, by the time they reach the tombstones, um, she's crying, like full blown crying. And she kind of does some self-reflecting about the fact that she really thought that her parents weren't going to make it. Not the marriage. Like she thought they were going to like off themselves because that's how heavy their grief was. It just didn't seem like there was a way out of it. She really thought she was going to be an orphan. She never told anyone that, but she really believed that that was going to happen because they were that deep in grief. And they've already planned to be buried next to him. So they've already got their plots there. And um, she doesn't like it. She feels like he's there alone. She understands that the body, he's not there. But she feels like she wished the mom would have cremated him. And then that way she could have had a piece of him with her in New York. And, you know, they could have had a piece of him, you know. And now it's like he's just by himself. That's how she feels. So um, they finally leave. They go back to the uh, chalet and uh, the next day they leave out and Harley doesn't want to see her mother at all. <laughs> that ain't changing right now. But um, she does call her dad and she tells him, you know, we're, we're heading out. He was disappointed because he didn't want to see her off, but she did invite him to um, New York um, so that, you know, he could visit. And that kind of satisfied him for the moment. Um, so they're on the PJ and she's completely into writing her novel and then Jackson, he's got like a hard time concentrating on his own work because he's, you know, he wants to just focus on her. And he gets a message from Phillips and saying, you need to call me now. We got a problem. And so he calls Phillips and finds out that his money, um, his investment man, uh, it's a guy named Richard Swanson. He has just been arrested for fraud. Uh, apparently he's been running a Ponzi scheme since like the early 90s and of course Jackson he's in shock you know because if this is an investment firm I guarantee you most of his money is tied up in it so I, I before I even read the rest I was like oh gosh god dang it he done got swindled so the guy's been running that Ponzi scheme since the 90s um Jackson like tries to drink some water to get like because his mouth's dry and he turned white. He's already a white man. He went pale and he drank some water, still couldn't talk. Finally, he's able to tell Harley what happened. And after he explains everything to her, um, Harley was just kind of like, how much did you invest with Swanson? And he's like six hundred million. Oh, so he drops Harley off um, at her place because he wants to be alone, and she wants to stay and comfort him, but he ain't having it. He's like, I, I, I just, I gotta go home. So, so he goes back to the mansion and he goes straight for his daughter uh, Lila's photo, pours himself a drink. And that, well, we find out in this, in reading this scene that his daughter's name is Lila. And the reason he loved the house so much is because um, she loved being in there. And he, you know, as long as he has that house, it's like he has a part of her. And that's why he's been holding on to it. Because it's a massive home. I mean, it's, it's a lot for a person. Um, so we find out he's put a mortgage on the house. So initially the house paid off, right? But then Manetta started having issues and it needed cash flow. So he put a mortgage on the house to infuse it with some cash. But now he's not going to be able to make the payments. So he gets a call from Phillips and he doesn't answer. And eventually he calls her back and says, you know, we might need to talk about going public again. 
and public you know he didn't want to go public because you know he loses control so harley calls julie and she tells her everything that's going on from the trip to the scandal um julie tells her that logan's dad lost a lot of money too harley doesn't reveal you know the amount you know first of all it ain't her business or anyone's business you know that's something he entrusted to tell her um and so then harley goes to sleep she wakes up someone's screaming it's julie so she's on a skype with logan and apparently they were they were skyping and he was in his hotel room and a naked woman just got out of the bed in the background so of course she's losing it she tells harley you know we're going out like I'm going to find a hotter, a hotter, a richer guy. And I'm going to fuck him in Logan's bed. I said, well, damn. <laughs> um, Harley, you know, was trying to convince her, you know, you don't want to do that. Just sleep on it. <laughs> Julie ain't hearing that. Julie's like, no, we're going out. <laughs> I was like, dang. So they go out. Julie gets completely plastered. She was so drunk. No one wasn't going to hook up with her with that invitation like nah it wasn't happening she threw up at the door threw up in the bathroom poor harley had to clean up all the shit it was horrible next morning julie's on the phone with logan again and she barges in the room and she's like we broke up she's crying she's upset and apparently there have been text messages and uh photos on social media as well with of him with other women and so um she's like we can't stay here anymore and so they're going to move back into the studio apartment. So Harley's worried about going back to the apartment. Because remember Parker has that restraining order against him. But he's out. So she's a little nervous about it. But you know at this point what are we going to do? So she calls Jackson because she hasn't really heard from him. And um, he sounds really brute preoccupied. And of course he would be. Like all this man's money is possibly just gone. So I mean... I'm sorry that you can't get this massive amount of time, but I mean, this is real shit, you know? And so, um, he kind of rushes her off the phone, but before he gets off, he does ask her, you know, are you still coming with me to the, uh, masquerade winter party? Woodruff, the guy that is supposed to be investing in the company, like, are you going to go with me to it? And she's like, yes. Yeah. So he sends the stylist over for her the next day. Um, the girls go out to like an Indian restaurant, have a little girl time, when they leave harley hears footsteps behind them and when she turns around she sees a male figure but then it like disappears so they rush inside but before they do harley starts yelling like you know to leave her alone so once they're inside julie's like you know why are you baiting him and harley was like i'm just tired of being scared like she's pretty much have had it with this whole situation with the parker guy and the stalking and everything she's just tired so then Jackson comes to pick her up for the masquerade ball and um they she uh what's her name? Julie does like a little quick tour. She didn't want him to see where she lived, but it's where you live, you know? So he, you know, sees their apartment, they leave, they go to the Hamptons for the party, so they gotta go by helicopter. On the way there, Jackson explains um the situation of having to figure out if he could still get this deal with Woodward or possibly having to sell the house to float money into Mineta. And he already had to close two low, uh, the lowest po uh, performing portions of the business. And so when they get to the party, they speak with Wood Woodward and he tells Jackson, you know, I'll talk to you later about business. And so then Jackson walks around, introduces her to a few people. And then while he's off to the restroom, a woman comes up to get Harley and says, you know, Woodward wants to see you in, the, in his office. And she, of course, is like, are you sure it's me? He doesn't want to see Jackson. The woman's like, he specifically, he specifically asked for you. So she goes to the office and he tells her, I have a proposition for you. And he asks her, you know, what are you willing, willing to do to help your friend's business, to save your friend's business? And she, of course, is like, you know, excuse me? And he's like, I'll pay you double whatever he's paying so he knows about the blog and he thinks she's an escort so she tries to run out of the office he grabs her hair pulls her back and then he kisses her and she can't break away so she bites down on his lip he of course yells out you bitch 
and that she hauls ass and she was trying to look for jackson but she can't see him it's like a sea of masks it's a masquerade party so she runs all the way down to the end of the driveway and she hides behind some bushes and she tries to call jackson no answer then she like texts him you know trying to text him what happened so then jackson spots woodward and you know he sees the lip and he's like you're all right and he's like yeah no nothing nothing big you know so they go back to the office and the conversation goes from pleasant to like downright harsh so basically woodward knows what jackson lost in that ponzi scheme and knows that he needs an infusion of cash immediately he even knows that jackson has put out the possibility of selling the home so jackson's thinking like dang i gotta how does he know all this you know because you gotta think jackson like super secretive so he calls him a recluse and says you know i don't understand why you would bring an escort to my party and jackson's like first of all she's not an escort and he keeps on and he keeps taunting him and so then jackson just punches his ass twice (laughs) and so then he gets out of there and he sees the messages from harley so he's driving slowly down the road and she's walked like two miles by this point she's taking off her shoes she's walking barefoot so he blows the horn she jumps in and she tells him what happened and then he tells her what he did um, they go back to the city. He asked her to stay the night and um, they were all hot and heavy. And then Jackson says, you know, you can tell me anything. I won't get mad. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he was like, if you were an escort, he's like, I wouldn't be mad. He's like, you can tell me anything. So now she's pissed because she's like, so Woodward tells you something and you automatically doubt me. And she was done. She was like, I fucking I was a fucking virgin when I met you she's like do you know how embarrassing that is in this city where people don't they all they do is hook up on the first night and then you doubt me and he of course is like no i believe you i believe you but she's like it's done she's like fuck it she left so harley catches the flu and um so and plus she's mad so she doesn't answer any of jackson's texts or any of his calls he tries to pop up she refuses to see him um julie julie tries to talk to her no avail um she starts writing her novel again um and she actually listened to one of jackson's company's podcasts about self-publishing during um one of her breaks from writing and um it was it was like you know what it was it helped her it motivated her even more and so jackson of course is crushed um he's officially put the house up for sale um he gets a knock on the door he think it's harley but it's actually his ex-wife aurora and so she's got a black eye so um she goes to the kitchen to get something cold to put on her eye and jackson's like you know why are you still with him so she's like with this um royal and um she's like well he buys me diamonds and i get to eat with the queen she's like i'm in love with him and so um she pretty much tell him tells him you know this has been going on for like a little bit and so we find out that they actually have a really good relationship jackson and aurora it's more like a brother sister type of almost that type of friendship at this point um she had a really bad case of postpartum after she had the baby and so once she married andrew she felt it was best for her not to see lila anymore so she just pretty much gave custody completely over to jackson which he was fine with worked out great for him um she tells um so we find out a little bit like she was kind of there after the baby died you know she was kind of there to help jackson and things like that but yeah for some reason she just totally was disconnected um she tells jackson you know they've always had her and her husband have always had like this violent relationship but it never but he's never hit her like they might break some shit you know (laughs) but they don't physically hurt each other but it changed when she found out he was like cheating on her earlier that year and that's when everything changed to the hitting so aurora she likes chaos she feeds off of it and so that's why her and jackson didn't work because jackson likes calm he doesn't like chaos so that's why they didn't work out and so then he tells her about what happened with harley and she tells him she'll be back just give her some more time so he finally tells aurora everything that's going on with the business and she comes up with an idea that well it looks like the 
you have good content 